Give me at the moment. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna try that again. I might need to have both of the screens up. Sorry about this. Showing stream. Okay, so thank you. Right, I might just need to do it this way. Can you still hear me from the beginning? Yes, can hear. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Sorry about this. Okay, so the first um, screen we've got here is a picture of um, me yawning, a really flattering picture of me yawning. Um, so this is a calming signal. Um, so we know that dogs give us calming signals um, with their, you know, that yawning, that's a calming signal they give to us. Um, they give it to other dogs. So it just shows sort of um, relaxed, friendly intentions, non-threatening, non obviously got closed eyes when you're yawning as well. Um, so this would be useful maybe for a dog that's feeling um, uh, anxious, rescue dogs, dogs that are feeling scared or dogs that are feeling worried. If they look to us and they, they see us yawning, we're sort of saying, look, I'm relaxed, I'm chilled, there's nothing to worry about. Um, and we've got some more calming signals here. So I've got uh, blinking and having soft eyes. So we know that when dogs have got car, um, almond shaped eyes, that they're, they're feeling, you know, they're relaxed, they're friendly, they're happy. And we can kind of do the same. Slow blinking is really good to help dogs that might be um, scared of people, for example. If I'm going around to see a dog that's not great with people, I'll make sure that I'm doing lots of slow blinking. It just, it breaks the eye contact. It means that we're not staring too much. Um, and um, we also know that if dogs are feeling frightened or scared, they might, or um, worried about something, they might have that whale eye. Um, so if we're blinking, we soften our eyes, we break the eye contact, we give them that sort of arm and shape. Um, and that can help the dogs too. Um, stretching is also a good one. So I've got a picture of somebody stretching here. Again, it's just it's just coming across as being relaxed and soft and gentle. Um, so these are all things that we can do to help um, pacify our messages and show dogs that we're not threatening. Um, so if you're perhaps visiting a, a, a friend's house and their, their dog isn't really good with strangers coming in, this can be helpful. Um, yeah, as I say, stretching, that's another one, just those sort of tired messages. So um, the picture of me standing up, I've got quite soft posture. So my shoulders are down and slumped and I'm just looking down to the floor um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not standing up completely straight. Um, so this is a soft posture, which it just softens the the. the the sort of outlook that we give dogs um, so again useful for dogs that are maybe not great with people worried with people um, you know going into somebody's home where they're not comfortable with strangers coming in this can just basically when you walk in the room you're not giving off any threatening messages you're not telling the dog that you're you're there to challenge them you're just sort of being soft um, and the picture on the right side is is a sideways posture so, you know, dogs will do this too. They, they will sort of maybe stand sideways. Um, uh, but, you know, they curve into other dogs if they're being friendly. We know that facing each other can be um, taken as being intimidating or confrontational. So we can do the same with our body language as well. Um, we, can, we can say, look, I'm not a threat. You know, I'm just standing sideways to you. So again, I'll do that if I'm going into a consultation and the dog is a bit uncomfortable with somebody coming into the house just stand sideways or suddenly I'm looking a lot less threatening than if I'm facing the dog uh, you can you can sit sideways as well I'll, I'll do that a lot too I'll sit right sideways to the dog so that I'm not um, giving off any incorrect messages um, and I think that that can be very very helpful if you're dealing with dogs that are, are nervous or fearful of people uh, so a bit more on posture here so the first picture here uh, hopefully you can um, read the text there, but it's it's assertive. So the man has got quite upright, assertive posture. His shoulders are back. Um, he's got you know his feet are uh, shoulder width apart. Um, he's holding his head up quite quite erect, um, and he's facing forwards. 
Um, so this is a, um, a, a different sort of message that we can give to dogs. And I feel this can be useful for dogs that are quite pushy, dogs that are not um, respecting your own personal space, maybe jumping up all over you, um, just not leaving you alone, that sort of thing. This can just be a bit more confident to say, no, I'm just in control of my own space here. Um, so this wouldn't be good for dogs that were very fearful, but it would be helpful for dogs that were being quite pushy. Um, so overly confident dogs, that can be um, that can uh, be helpful for just just confident and assertive with, without being threatening. Um, and the next uh, couple of pictures here, I've I've got a couple more, more pictures of me being having soft body language. So um, good for nervous dogs. So I'm sitting down and I'm suddenly half the height that I was before. So when we stand up, we can be quite intimidating to dogs, especially small dogs, because we're giants, you know, we loom over them. Um, and quite often, if we just sit down and we, you know, reduce our height, we can suddenly appear much less threatening. Um, and I've, I've got my head tilted in the middle picture. I hope that you can see that OK. Um, uh, so again, I've got a soft back. I'm slightly, slightly hunched forwards. You know, I don't have that erect, upright posture, um, and it's just very non-threatening. It's it's giving off all the right messages that I'm, you know, I'm not pushy. I'm not um, not intimidating. I'm not I'm not scary. Um, and I don't know why I've put that in again, but it's just another picture of of my standing soft posture. Um, for for dogs that are are you know small i will quite often drop down with it with um onto my knees and just you know reduce my height because i'm quite tall anyway um especially if they're a bit nervous because it, it can just change it just changes the posture of a giant sort of standing there looming over them you know so i think that could be helpful as well as to just change our you know go from standing to sitting it can help some nervous dogs okay so on to the next slide so these pictures aren't brilliant. I wasn't really able to get the sort of pictures that I like, um, but this is about mirroring. So I like to um, sometimes mirror the signals that dogs are giving me. So if I see a dog is, uh, is giving me calming signals, I might give those calming signals back. Um, if a dog is tilting its head to the side slightly, I might tilt my head to the side slightly. And it's just a respectful way of mirroring the, the messages that they're giving. And I find it quite a respectful thing to do. To, I believe that it just says to the dog, look, hey, I, I hear what you're saying um, and I'm, I'm going to match that, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match how you're feeling. So Buddy's lying down, so I just decided to lay down. Um, and then the one on the sofa, he, he's looking down. Um, and I've got my eyesight down as well. It might look like I'm looking into his eyes, but I'm not. Um, and he quite often um, just ever so slightly turns his head away from me if I'm in front of him. Um, and I will do the same. I will do the same back. So we're not I'm not facing him because he doesn't want to directly face me. So I will do the same back to him. And it's just a sort of a friendly, respectful way to mirror messages back to the dog. OK, so this is about intimidation. Um, so. A couple of pictures here of me bending over um, now. Some dogs will tolerate this, you know, some dogs will tolerate um, us staring into their eyes or us pointing at in their faces or, you know, patting them hard on the head. Some dogs are very tolerant of, of the mistakes we make in our body language and some dogs are not. Um, but I, I think it's still nice to do the right thing regardless. So um, I'm bending over the, the little white dog, um, you know, and if you look at it from her perspective, that's probably quite scary. Um, she may be lying down because she she wants to try to show that she's uh, feeling slightly uncomfortable in the situation. She may be lying down because she just wants a tummy rub. Um, but for me, the point is that my body language is not that friendly there. I'm bending all the way over her. I'm, I'm leaning over into her space um, and I'm quite tall. Um, so that could, for some dogs, they could find that quite intimidating. Um, and I, I, I think a lot of people don't realise they do this with their own dogs. 
um, you know, it's probably easier to just bend over sometimes than it is to squat down. Um, but what messages are we giving our dogs when we do this? Um, another picture of me bending over into body. Now, he's he knows me very well um, and he won't take any bad messages from me when I do this. But I just wanted to show it as an example that if you see, I'm leaning right over into his space. Um, and, you know, he's a big dog. Um, if that was a small dog, that, that could be quite intimidating. So it can be quite overpowering. It can be quite th threatening to some dogs. Like I say, some dogs will tolerate it and others might not like it at all. You might find that when you do that, they run away or they, you know, they give you avoidance they, or they give you a lip lick or something like that to say that they're not feeling entirely comfortable with it. Um, so it's just worth being being mindful of that. Um, I say to people, if you've got a bad back and you find it hard or bad knees and you find it hard to go down onto your knees, then maybe if you need to bend over, just bend, bend so you're not looming over the dog. You're sort of sideways onto the dog and that just softens it a little bit. So this is some more intimidating um, body language. Uh, none of this makes me comfortable. I did that picture obviously just for the um, presentation. Um, it's something I'm, I never do this. And I think Luna's probably thinking, why are you doing this to me? Because <laughs> uh, she's not used to me doing that. Um, so in the picture on my left, I'm down low <clears throat> and I'm at um, her eye height and I'm, I'm looking directly into her eyes. Um, now, that can be quite intimidating. It can be quite challenging to some dogs. Um, and I think that this is a problem with when children do it as well, because children are roughly the sort of the same height as dogs. So when children um, sort of look into dogs' eyes, they, they tend to be quite close to their faces and it can be quite intimidating. And I think that that's what leads to sometimes the bites happening. Um, so it's never good to stare directly into a dog's eyes, um, you know, even if it's your own dog, even if your dog is, is tolerant of it, it's never good to do it. In, in Amongst dogs themselves, they will do that if they're challenging. They will do, they will, they will keep that direct straight eye contact um, without blinking. If they're trying to communicate um, normally over challenging of a resource, for example, food or space. Um, so it's 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 challenging um, and it's just not the sort of messages that we want to be giving our dogs. Um, the picture on the right, the man who's looking into the dog's eyes now. I don't know if this is his dog or not. I don't know. Um, I don't, hopefully you can see that. But his stare looks quite intense. Um, and he's not smiling. If if we smile and do this, it, it changes the shape of our eyes. If we blink and do this, we, we, we're breaking the eye contact. But if we've just sort of staring into the dog's eyes, it's not it's not nice. It's not friendly. Now, the French bulldog um, is trying to um, uh, negate this and he's not looking directly into the man's eyes. So he, he doesn't want the challenge. He's looking somewhere like his mouth or his nose because he doesn't want to, to match that eye contact because he doesn't want the challenge. But the man, whether he knows it or not, the man is, is giving off quite intimidating messages to this dog. Um, so that is intimidation. And that's something that I think happens a lot without people realising it. I, I see people sort of meaning, meaning with all the best intentions, but unfortunately you know it can be quite scary to a dog um and sometimes it can lead to biting if you know if they're not heard if they if their messages are not heard back um okay so i'm moving on to the next slide so this is avoidance now um i use this in my work because dogs do it to each other so dogs will turn their heads to the side or they may turn their whole body to the side if they want the thing in front of them to go away and the thing in front of them might be a person it might be a dog it might be me with my nail clippers when i'm trying to clip my dog's nails and he says oh no not this and he turns his head away so it's saying that you're getting too in too close into my personal space i'm not comfortable with this you know not now i want you to move away so we can actually do this too 
So we can apply that same principle to our dogs and they do understand it. Um, and you might want to use that in a situation if you feel like your dog's really pestering you. So I'll do that sometimes. If I feel like the dogs are just really pestering and I want them to go away, I might just turn my head and they will understand that I'm saying not now. And um, sometimes I'll do that to communicate that I want my own space. You know, sometimes I think that's healthy to say, I want my space, leave me alone, please. Um, and I get my uh, clients to do this in sessions. And sometimes I think the dogs understand it, but it's another it's another thing whether they'll actually respect it. So some dogs are quite respectful of it and they go, OK, fine, I'll go away and I'll leave you alone. Um, and some dogs are a little bit more pushy and they just say, well, I don't care. I'm going to keep climbing on you anyway. Um, but I'm, I'm quite sure that they do understand what it means because they do do it to each other. And um, so that's that's avoidance that we can give to dogs, uh, which is I've sort of taken from their own body language. OK, next um, slide I've got here, uh, invitation. So I always like to ask um, a dog if it wants to be um, petted and fussed. I, I, as opposed to just going into their space, I like to ask the question, do you want to come to me for some fuss? Um, and so that's what I'm doing in this picture. And I've got open palms. Um, and so I'm inviting the dog over to me, um, you know, and I might sort of clap my hands and sort of do this as well um, to say, you know, do you want to come over for a fuss? Now, in this particular instance, she doesn't want to. She's slightly turning her head to the side, um, and which I would say she's sort of showing me a little bit of avoidance. She's saying, no, I don't want to, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but this is just an example of invitation. So inviting a dog into your own personal space, so you've got that sort of open, friendly posture. Um, you might have a big smile on your face. You might, uh, like I say, sort of do that, call them over to you, those open palms. It, it, just, it just seems to have an effect on them when it, whenever I do it anyway. If I do that, then the dogs will tend to come in because it, I think it just comes across as being quite open and friendly. Um, OK, so this uh, lady, she looks quite worried. Now, dogs are reading our face, face, um, faces all the time. They're, they're looking at our eyebrows, you know, the, the, our foreheads the whites of our eyes, um, you know, the, the corners of our mouth and everything like this. So I've put this up as an, as an example. This woman is saying that there's a problem, something wrong here. And if her dog was to look at her in that moment, her dog would be, would be getting the message that there's a problem. So in the instance of fireworks, for example, or if there's a noise or, you know, there's a bang or something like that, um uh, or thunder or something and your dog looks worried or, or sort of jumps up and looks a little bit panicky and then looks to you dog's going to be looking to you for information and instruction asking what's happening here if they're presented with this face they're going to be told that there's a problem and i believe that that's when we can instill fear of fireworks into dogs if they receive this information from us at the precise moment and that when they're looking to us for guidance so it's something to be mindful of that you know we we project an awful lot with our faces um and you know that dogs are really excellent at reading us so uh, especially if there's something that you think is concerning your dog the worst thing that you can do is to have a panicky face because that's going to confirm how your dog is feeling on the other hand if you've got a relaxed face you're saying everything is okay so the man's got soft eyes he's smiling he looks quite happy um, you can't see a lot of the whites of his eyes if I go back to the last picture you can see quite a lot of the whites of her eyes um, and look at her forehead it's really wrinkly and her eyebrows look you know worried if you look at this man who's just got a soft, happy looking face um, and the same with the woman, she's even got her eyes closed, um, which I think as well can help dogs. Because if if there was a problem, if you had a pack of dogs or, or foxes or wolves or whatever, and there was a problem, 
the the pack would not be sleeping they wouldn't be resting they they would be alert and you know their pupils would dilate and they'd be ready for fight or flight um so the opposite of that it has that effect um if we show the complete opposite of that so i'm really relaxed i'm 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 sleepy i'm tired i'm happy i'm smiling because there's nothing to worry about so in that moment if your dog is is panicking looking to you for for help and guidance when the fireworks are on these are the sorts of faces that we need to give them and not the panicky worried looking faces because that's just going to uh, confirm that there's a problem to the dog so that's the end of my little presentation thank you all for watching that let me just stop sharing my screen i'm going to come back and join you so hopefully you can all hear me um if any of you have got any questions you can type them in the box um and i will run through them any comments on what we've just been through or any other questions in general with your dogs um and i'm going to run the competition now so i'm going to show you a picture of a dog and i'd like you to tell me what breed of dog it is please um so i haven't i haven't i'm not reading it out this time i'm just showing you a picture so what breed of dog is this? Oh, and the, the winner will get a one-to-one -one with me, either a Zoom or a home visit. So can you see what dog that is? Hopefully you all saw that. If you think you know what it is, just type it in the box. Um, and I'll announce the winner, winner in a second. Um, and I'm going to just read through your messages. So Zoe says, hi, she's got her cockapoo honey. Hi, Zoe, how are you? Nice to have you here. Hi, Katie. Um, nice to have you here from Canine and Feline. Hi, Sally. Hi, Sarah. Um, right, I'm just going to see if there's any questions about your dogs. Uh, so, Sarah's put a chain. I don't know if that's a spelling mistake, but no, it's not a chain. So, a chain, sorry. Uh, Liesl said to Betty, no, sorry, Liesl, it's not. John says it's a Cairn Terrier. It is a Cairn Terrier, but John, you're a behaviourist, so you don't need my help. Uh, so, Ruth Barber, yes, it is. So, Ruth, drop me a message and we can have a chat about arranging the session with you. Um, okay, I don't think there's any dog questions today, so unless there's any that come in recently, I'm going to finish off. But before I go, I want to tell you about my um, next live sessions that I've got coming up. So on the 7th of December, I've got Tellington Tea Touch um, live with Seeker Canine Massage. So she's going to be showing us how to do tea touch with our dogs. That's on the 7th of December at 7 p.m., and then on the 11th and 12th of December, I'm running my experiment. Um, so this is to find out if dogs can read our mind. Um, it's really easy. If you want to join in, I'm trying to get 100 people to do it. If you want to join in, you basically just need to um, sign yourself up to the event on my page and go out of the house at 11 o'clock on the 11th or the 12th of December. And I will tell you when to come home and um, for somebody to monitor your dog and see what your dog does when you decide to come home if there's a change in its behavior then that would lead us to think that it can sense your your coming home and therefore read your mind um so zoe's got a question do bitches in season hunt more is this normal uh yes zoe i have i have seen that before i have seen that. i think it's i think it's potentially hormonal i think their their behavior can change quite a lot they can display a lot of unusual um, behaviors not not i don't think it's anything to worry about um obviously just keep her away from other dogs and it should it should pass try not to draw too much attention to it um yes nothing to worry about zoe ophelia hurst hi ophelia um question how would you approach with an anxious dog and a new person coming into your home so if you watch the um replay ophelia you will see i've i've shown quite a lot of really good advice on this so just coming in with soft body language standing sideways softening your body just looking down to the ground just ignoring the dog um you know smelling natural 
th those sorts of things can help um, avoid looking at the dog if it's very nervous some dogs can't even tolerate a split second of eye contact you know split second of even looking they can't tolerate that um so just just like direct your eyesight to somewhere else in the room sit down uh, but not be quite so tall that can help too um but if you watch the replay you'll get a little bit more information on that um okay oh sarah says she can't spell ken sorry zara um Catherine Hill, can a bitch have a season and not bleed? Um, I don't know is the answer to that. I know that they can, it can go unnoticed because they may be very clean um, and they may lick the blood and you might not even notice that they've had a season. Um, I, I would be surprised, speaking as a woman, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some blood also speaking as a woman, I think they probably vary in the volume of blood that they um, lose. For me, the way of knowing that a bitch is in season for sure is to look at her genitals and they'll be splayed. And also, if you notice that other dogs are really paying interest in her, um, really, she's really sort of attracting attention out on a walk more than normal, that can be a sign. Another sign is change in weave in scent patterns. So maybe lots more scent marking on a walk, lots of lots of little weaves. You might notice nesting behavior. You might just notice changes in behavior. But the giveaway sign is the vulva being completely like enlarged. Uh, you can't miss it. So providing your dog hasn't got too much fur, or even when she's lying on her back, you should be able to see that. It's quite a telltale sign, but. Some dogs, they, you don't see a single spot of blood because they, they're very clean and they just lick it all away. So I would doubt it. I'm not a, a vet expert, but I would say that there would be some blood somewhere. Um, another question from Ophelia, but should you put the dogs behind a gate so the person can come in if, you, if your dog runs up to people? Yes. If the dog is nervous, what can also help Ophelia is maybe going for a walk first because it's quite full on. For a dog you know imagine a dog's just sleeping then all of a sudden bang 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 there's someone at the door and then a strange person comes into the house that can be quite inten intense so a way of calming that down a little bit might be to go for a walk first so the person could take their dog out for a walk and you could have the, the stranger across the street just walking in the same direction and then slowly getting closer together, closer together, so closer together. So that the the sort of the greeting happens gradually and with distance to start with. And then I would have the dog go in first and the, per, the visitor to go in second. And the reason for that is dog can't bite if it's in front. Um, and I just have the person come in and sit down, you know, just sit down, relax. Um, maybe chuck a bit of food down to try and show friendly intentions and just ignore the dog, you know. Um, but yes, I'd say to have the dog on a lead if it's got tendencies to sort of run and charge at people, whether it's whether it's scared or whether it's just being, you know, wanting to get attention from the person coming in. Um, uh, as Christine says, don't worry. I would say she can't spell it either. Um, so Rack Mullane is a silent season, but would need to diagnose based on blood tests. Okay, so Rack says that you can get a blood test to find out about um, being in season. I must admit, I didn't know that. I suppose you could talk to your vet about that. Um, for me, the, the telltale tell sign is other dogs. Uh, and, and not that you want to bring your dog to other dogs, but just if you notice other dogs are showing a real interest in your dog, then, you know, they can smell it from a long way away. Um, I remember I was walking my dog once um, and there was a, you know, there was a, res a dog that lives in the neighbourhood um, that's all sort of just always there, no problem. And then one day my dog was just really, really pulling, pulling, pulling in the direction. And I thought, I bet this dog is in season. And she was, she was, he could smell it from, I don't know how far away, like 400 metres or something. Um, so it really does draw other dogs in. Um, a message from Catherine Hill, Catherine Hill. Thank you. It's just Daisy's drawing lots of male attention and wants to hunt Piper. Oh, hi, Catherine. Sorry, I didn't realise it was you. Hi. Um, yes. Okay. So maybe she's finally coming into season. Yeah. 
and uh, wants to hump Piper. Yeah, I, I reckon it could be. If she's getting a lot of male attention, I'd put money on it for sure. I'll put money on it for sure. Try and have a look at her genitals. I uh, see if she's licking a lot. Has she gone off her food? Uh, is she nesting? Um, you know, is, has she changed her scenting, her weeing? Is she doing more of it? Those are the telltale signs. And she is due it, knowing her age. Uh, so I think it could be, I think it, it, it she probably is. <laughs> uh, we were waiting for that, weren't we? Um, and hello, by the way. Okay, so I don't think we've got any more questions. So I'm just going to give you those dates again before I finish up. So 7th of December at 7 p.m. Tellington Tea Touch. Learn how to give your dog a tea touch massage. Um, and 11th and 12th of December, um, the experiment. If you go to my page and go to the events, you'll see the events there. Just click yourself as going and you'll get more instructions from there. So have a lovely evening. Um, and if I don't see you all before Christmas, if I don't do a live before then, which I may do, we'll have a lovely Christmas. And thank you all for joining.